Kangaroo, first you must understand the small letter A, B, C and capital A, B, C first. So over here, small letter we use for length and capital letter we use for the angle. And they have some relationship between small letter A and capital A. You can see the angle of the the angle of the capital A, the opposite length is exactly the small letter A. So here the angle of capital B, opposite is just small letter B. So if you understand the idea, we actually have two different sign rule here. Actually they are not different, they are the same sign rule, but we will use it at a different purpose. So if I want to find the angle, I will use the first one. But if I want to find the length, I will use the second one. You, if you see carefully, you realize basically I just flip over the angle. Alright, if you understand this, the last thing you need to understand is when to use the sign rule. So in order to use the sign rule, we must have the one combination. When I say one combination is what? You must have the information like you need to have the angle and the opposite length. You must have one group of combination, then I will use the sign rule. Can be different group like capital A and small letter A or capital C and small letter C can be either one of the group here. So let's have a look at this example. So I have 50 degrees, 80 degrees, length is x and 4 here. All right, first I want to ask myself, should I use a sign rule? I need to look for one combination. If I have the 80 degree, I don't have the opposite length. If I have the 50 degree here, I have the opposite length. Do you see the opposite length? This is what I call one combination. So for this combination, tell me I can use a sign rule. Then I need to ask myself, should I use the first one or the second one? Depend, I want to find the length or I want to find the angle. So right now, I want to find the x. x is the length here. So I will use the second one, which is for length here. Because the length is on the top. So, okay, this is how I write it. x over sine. This angle must be the angle opposite the x. You can see x is here. The angle opposite here will be 80 degrees, sine 80 equals to another length here which is 4 over sine 50 because 50 degree is the angle opposite the length of the 4 here. Okay, if you see the idea, the, the last step is very easy. You just use your calculator, do 4 divided by sine 50, multiply the sine 80 degree. You type everything in your calculator, then you will easily get the answer. Okay, in order to master the cosine rule, there's two different formula here. Both formula actually are the same formula. It's just the second formula here. I make the cos A of the first formula as a subject. Then I will get the second formula. You can try it out yourself. But here I'm going to tell you when to use the first one and when to use the second one. When I want, whenever I want to use the first one, I want to make sure I have two sides and one angle at between. All right, so let's say I might have the side here and side here and I have the angle at between. And the length I want to find, I will call it small letter A. So over here, I want to find a small letter A. Then I will use the first one. Alright, but it's it not necessarily like, like this. It can be something like, um, I have the side like this, side like this, two sides and one angle at between. And then I want to find a small letter A. Okay, so in order to use the first formula, you must have the information two sides and one angle at between. Alright, in order to use the second formula here, you need to have three sides which is ABC, without any angle. But the angle I want to find, I'm going to call it as an angle A here. So the most important is the letter A here, because B and C, if you see carefully the relationship between B and C, they are just plus each other. So it doesn't matter which one is B and which one is C. But the A is very important because later I kind of need to minus a small letter A here. So therefore A will be the length is always opposite there angle A. Okay, if you understand the theory of this one, I will give you an example like this. So let's say I simply give some length here. This is 5 and then this one will be 6 and then this angle is 20 degree. And then I want to find the X. Do you see I have two sides and one angle between them? So in order to find the X, I will call my X as an A here. So I will say X square will equal to 5 square plus 6 square minus 2, 5, 6 cos 20. Alright, definitely I just need to solve this equation then I can easily I can easily get the answer here. Alright, let's say we have the triangle look like this. They give you two lengths, you have 10, 8, and the an angle between will be 40 degree. 
and then the question asks you to find x here. All right, then this is the information I have, which is two sides and one angle at between. So in order to find an x, I have to ask myself, should I use the first formula or second formula? The second, the first one is for the length, isn't it? And then the second one is for you to find the angle. So just remember. So now I want to find a length, I will use the first formula. So the first formula tell me what? a squared equals to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. But what is a? a will be the length you want to find. So if this is the length I want to find, I'm going to call it a squared equals to b and c will be another two sides. Which one is b and which one is c it doesn't matter. So I will say 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 multiply 10 multiply 8 multiply cos 40. And then what I want to do next is I just move my square to the other side will square root my answer just now. Then I will get my final answer here. So basically it's quite simple as long as you know uh, which one is A and which angle you should take for the cos theta here and then you are fine. Alright, so let's say we have a different example. Let's say in this example, I have 3, 4 and 5 here and then I ask you to find the angle x. Alright, right now, I have 3 sides without any angle and I want to find the angle then this is why you need to use a second formula. Second formula, you will use it when you have three sides without any angle and you want to find the angle. So this is how we will use here. So the angle I want to find, I'm going to call it cos. This one I assume is a capital A, so I say cos x equals to. Okay, B and C, it doesn't matter, just two sides, which is three square plus five square. But you need to minus the A square. A must be the length opposite the angle, which is four here. Minus four square over 2bc which is 3 multiplied with 5 and then if I want to find the angle x here what I will do is I will move my cos to the other side become cos inverse and then the answer above here after you type in the calculator and then you will easily get the final answer. Alright in this video I'm going to teach you how to identify uh, which rule you should use for this 6 triangle here is either sine rule or cosine rule. So SR is a short form for sine rule and CR is a short form for cosine rule. Alright, so let's have a look at the first triangle. In order to use sine rule, we must have one combination, right? Like what I say, must have the angle and the opposite length. So I have one combination like this. So the first one, I use the sine rule. Alright, then for the second one, this triangle, okay, if I have the angle, but I do not know what is my opposite length, and I have the length here, but I don't have the angle, I don't know the angle. I have this length, I don't know the opposite angle. So definitely I cannot use the sine rule. But what is cosine rule? Cosine rule tell me I must have two sides and an angle between. Do you see two sides and one angle between them? So this one will be cosine rule. Alright, for this one, same idea. If you have the length, but you don't have the opposite angle, you don't have one combination, so you can't use the sine rule. So cosine rule, the second formula for cosine rule is when you have three sides without any angle, you want to find the angle, we are using cosine rule. Alright, then we see the fourth triangle here. So I see the angle and I have the opposite length, which is 10 here. Then this is considered one combination. Then I will use the sine rule here. Alright, then for this triangle, I have two sides and one angle between. Then this combination will be cosine rule. Okay, two sides and one angle between the two sides here. You should be able to see the pattern. You, you will need to use the cosine rule. The last one, I have three sides. Without any angle given, I need to find an angle. It will be the second formula of the cosine rule. Alright, so understand which formula to use is very important in this solution of triangle topics. I hope this video you find it helpful.